Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Shall I? A 74-year-old female patient presented to the ER with complaints of fatigue, loss of appetite since 3 days and constipation since 2 days. On 10 second assessment, airway was patent, no secretion, gurgling, hoarseness of voice. On breathing, patient was maintaining a saturation of 98% at room air, respiratory rate was 16 minutes and air entry was bilaterally equal and normal vesicular breath sounds. On circulation, patient had a BP of 140-90 mm Hg and a heart rate of 84 per minute. At this time, two large IV cannulas were put. On disability, patient GCS was 15 out of 15 and GRBS was 110 mg per deciliter. On exposure, patient was febrile. Adjuncts to the primary survey. What else will you do in exposure? Any rashes, mm. uh, check for the temperature of the patient, mm. uh, any trauma is there. Mm. So, and uh, elderly individuals are prone for? Prone for? Elderly individuals and in case of children, they are prone for uh, hypothermia. Mm. So, their hypothermia should be prevented by giving them warm, warm blankets. blankets. So, initially we will be exposing, don't leave that patient exposed, cover the patient back. Okay. Adjuncts to the primary survey. Initially, we had taken the VBG of the patient. So, uh, what is uh, so this patient came with drowsiness and fati fatigue, fatigue, loss of appetite, and mm -hmm. constipation since two days. So, what all are the uh, differential diagnoses which you suspect now? Uh, elderly female patient mm -hmm. can present with some infections due to sepsis. Patient can go into fatigue, loss mm -hmm. of appetite. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, patient can have any history of malignancies. Mm -hmm. Uh, patient can have any electrolyte imbalances. Okay, so first what investigation will you do? Uh, we had done a VBG for the patient. So before VBG, in the primary survey itself, we will have to do the GRBS. GRBS. So what was the glucose? GRBS was 110 mg per deciliter. Then we had done a VBG, taken a VBG for the patient. Mm. In the VBG, there was no acid base uh, imbalance. pH was 7.4, uh, HB was 14, potassium was 3.5. <coughs> Sodium 134, uh, calcium was 2.05, creatine 1.2. Okay. So from the VBG, we had a scene of hypercalcemia. So uh, after that, we had taken an ECG for looking any changes. So what is the, what is uh, what is hypercalcemia? Hypercalcemia, uh, calcium more than 10.2 mm. is known as hypercalcemia. Normal range is from 8.7. That is serum calcium. Serum, serum calcium. What is a normal serum calcium? 8.7 to 10.2. 10.2. So, any value more than 10.2. But in our AB, uh, venous blood gas, we will be getting the which ionized, ionized calcium. Ionized calcium. That is so, from 1.15 to 1.29. Mm. So, more than 1.29 can be considered as hypercalcemia. Okay. Mm. Uh, so, then we had taken an ECG to mm. look for any changes of hypercalcemia. Mm. So, so, what are the changes of hypercalcemia? There in can ECG? be QTC pro, uh, shortening in the ECG. What is normal QTC? QTC is uh, 450 in males and four, up to 480 in females. Mm. Then there can be Osborne waves. Mm. Uh, patient what is also, Osborne waves? Uh, J point elevation can be there. Mm. Then, so, uh, have you seen the a pattern of uh, right bundle branch block? Yes. What will you see? In right bundle branch block, there can be uh, RSR pattern. RSR pattern. So, what is difference between RSR pattern and Osborne waves? So, R S R dash pattern, we will be seeing the first R small and the second R will be taller. Whereas in Osborne waves, the first R will be taller than the second R. Okay. And uh, Osborne waves are seen in which all conditions? One is hypercalcemia. Mm. Uh, then Classically, it is seen in? Hypothermia. Hy hypothermia. hypothermia. So, if the patient, if you are seeing a patient, it might not be secondary to any drowning or exposure to any ice or anything. Even in ICU patients, if you are seeing the ECG waves like uh, Osborne waves, that patient may in, will be in hypothermia. So, so, we need to cover, give bear huggers and treat accordingly. So, mostly it is seen in hypothermia. Okay. And QTC narrowing QTC also. Narrowing. 
Um, then we had uh, done a <coughs> CBC CRP for the patient to rule out any sepsis is present. Total count was 11,000 and CRP was 2. Uh, then uh, since the patient had complaints of constipation, X-ray abdomen erect with both diaphragm was taken to rule out any obstruction, mm. but there was no features of obstruction. Mm. Uh, then uh, we had sent for the lab calcium and albumin levels. Lab calcium was 16.72 and albumin was 2.8. Okay. Uh, sample history. So when you call it as severe hypercalcemia? More than 16 can be considered as severe hypercalcemia. Okay. So in that scenario only, so initially if the calcium is more than 10, like it, if it is between 12 to 14 and all, patient might not be much symptomatic. So what all are sim uh, symptoms which you expect in hypercalcemia? In hypercalcemia, patient can present with bone features, that is patient can have bone pains. Mm. Uh, then patient can present with renal stones and renal failure. Mm. Then patient can go for anorexia, abdominal pain and, uh, and constipation. Mm. Uh, patient can get uh, arrhythmias when there is hypercalcemia. Uh, then patient can go for depression, anxiety, uh, coma. Features. So what is a mnemonic which we tell? Uh, Chimpanzee, you know, and that is cause. Causes. Bone, uh, mm. bones, bones bronze, for bone pain. pain. Then stones. Stones for the renal, renal stones. stones. Then uh, groans. Groans for, for the abdominal, abdominal features. Pain. Mon, mons, mons for, for the, the psychiatric, psychiatric manifestations. Features. Or if you are thinking from head to toe, uh, you can imagine patient can have altered sensorium. Sometimes they will be drowsy or sometimes they will be very irritable. Uh, to, uh, sometimes they can be drowsy, stuprous and all. Sometimes they can be irritable, they can have seizures or they might be presenting in coma. That is from the head. Then when we go down, in the heart, what will you find? Patient can have arrhythmias. Arrhythmias can be there. Mostly ventricular fibrillation secondary to the uh, QT variations. Mm -hmm. So the refractory period will reduce. So the patients are prone for arrhythmias. And when you come down to abdomen, Patient can have anorexia, mm. uh, constipation, abdominal pain. Mm. Constipation and uh, uh, abdominal pain is secondary mostly because of the constipation, uh, because of the hypercalcemia. Then other things are because of hypercalcemia, what are, uh, other abdominal issues can happen? Patient can have pancreatitis mm. due to the stones. Mm. Pancreatitis can be there. So pancreatitis itself will cause what, what abnormality in calcium? Hypercalcemia can cause pancreatitis. Pancreatitis can cause hypocalcemia. Hypocalcemia. Okay, so uh, why hypocalcemia will come in pancreatitis? Because of the saponification. Okay, so hypercalcemia can cause pancreatitis and pancreatitis can cause hypocalcemia. Then constipation can be there. Then uh, gastric ulcers can be there. Along with that, uh, then other thing is the stones, the renal stones. stones. Okay, and hypercalcemia can cause what abnormality in urine? In the frequency uh, of poly, polyuria can be there. Polyuria, polydipsia are features of hypercalcemia. And uh, when you come to the musculoskeletal, bone pain can be bone there. pains can be there. Okay. So, uh, we have this patient, elderly female with um, altered sensorium and, uh, and all and we found that this patient is having severe hypercalcemia. Okay, so what did you do next? Uh, sample history was taken. Mm -hmm. 74 year old female, known case of angioimmunoblastic T-cell lymphoma with metabolically active lytic lesions in multiple bones and lymph node, presented with complaints of fatigue, loss of appetite since 3 days and constipation since 2 days. There was no history of abdominal pain, obstipation or vomiting, no history of fever, cough, no history of dysuria. Uh, on a systemic evaluation, Per abdomen, it's soft, non-tender, bowel sounds were present, other systems were normal. Uh, so uh, lab put, uh, calcium came as 16.72 and albumin was 2.8. So we had calculated the corrected calcium using the formula 4 minus the albumin into 0.8 plus the calcium. 
so it was 17.68 uh, corrected calcium so initially uh, we had looked for the ivc uh, and ruled out there is no fluid overload and uh, good, there was good lv function so we gave fluids ideally fluid should be given 10 liters per day uh, that is at a rate of 200 <coughs> to 300 ml uh, per hour and uh, also we gave, uh, started on la iv lasix for forced diuresis so it was started at 4 mg per hour iv infusion uh, then after that we started the patient on injection calcitonin. So uh, fluids and lasix can be given for initial treatment of uh, hypercalcemia. So that is okay to be given. Mm -hmm. The rest of the treatment for hypercalcemia sh uh, should be done after finding out what the cause is. Mm -hmm. So this patient it is clear that this patient is already having a lymphoma. Mm -hmm. So lymphoma might be the cause of hypercalcemia. Calcium. If in another individual if we don't know the cause uh, we cannot give uh, calcitonin or steroids before knowing what the cause is. So, uh, what are the causes of hypercalcemia? Uh, it can be due to primary hyperparathyroidism. Mm. Uh, most common causes? Causes primary hyperparathyroidism and malignancies. Mm. So, uh, most commonly it will be parathyroid adenoma. Uh. Then hi any other hyperparathyroidism. Okay. Then it can be due to familial hypocalcuric hypercalcemia. Mm. Uh, then it can be due to uh, any neoplasms. Mm. Uh, then aluminum intoxication can be there. solinger ellison mm. syndrome can be there. Uh, then it can be due to uh, electrolyte imbalances can be there. Um, these are the causes. So uh, mostly how was calcium used up in the body? Uh, how and is the calcium absorbed and uh, removed? 90 percentage uh, uh, of calcium is in the 99 percent of calcium is in the bone Bones. then one percentage is in the extracellular fluid. Okay, in so how will uh, body metabolize the calcium? So body will absorb the calcium from the intestines. intestines. Okay, and if at all the body is going into hypocalcemia, it will use from the bones also. Mm -hmm. And it will be removed through the kidney. Mm -hmm. And if there is hypocalcemia, body will try to prevent removal from the kidney. Mm -hmm. Okay, so based on that, we can remember the causes. So if there is any excessive renal, ex uh, sorry, ex any excessive bone reabsorption, uh, when will bone absorption of calcium will happen? When more parathyroid hormone is present. Oh, one is can hyper parathyroidism. Then? Then vitamin D uh, mm. increase can cause mm. more calcium mm. in the body. Mm. And hyperthyroidism oh, also hyperthyroidism. can use uh, take up more bone calcium. Mm. And in renal failure, there will, what, will, what will you expect in renal failure? There can be hypercalcemia and hypophosphatemia. Uh, renal failure, ideally we will be seeing hypocalcemia and hyperphosphatemia. Why is hypocalcemia seen in renal failure? In renal failure patient, we, we are expecting anemia and also reduced calcium level in the body. Why is anemia? Erythropoietin, Erythropoietin is uh, released from the kidney, so that is deficient, so anemia. Similarly, we will be seeing hypocalcemia. Why? Yes, ah, vitamin, vitamin D induced. D induced. Uh, uh, they have 125 alpha hydroxylase is in the kidney. So, because of that, hypocalcemia will be there. So, in renal failure patients, sometimes there can be excessive bone resorption and sometimes it will, it might very rarely, it might cause hypercalcemia also. So, renal failure is one cause. Then, hyperparathyroidism or any hyperthyroidism can be uh, some of the causes of the uh, increased bone absorption. Mm -hmm. Then other causes are malignancy. malignancy. So in malignancy what will happen? In malignancy also parathyroid related peptide will be increased. Mm. So due to that they can be hypercalcemia. Then mm. they can be vitamin D increased. Mm. Or in malignancy there can Calcium. be uh, bone mobilization, mm. excessive osteoclastic activity. activity. This can also <laughs> increase the calcium in the body. That is the bone related thing. Mm. Next is the urine related thing. So, uh, calcium is excreted through urine. urine. So, when will calcium excretion be reduced? Renal failure. Uh, renal failure, okay. Any familial conditions? Uh, familial, familial, uh, familial loss of, if uh, some familial diseases will have reduced calcium uh, f uh, f uh, removal from the body. Mm -hmm. And thiazide diur mm -hmm. diuretics also. Thiazide diuretics right. will have reduced calcium excretion from the body. So that can also cause hypercalcemia. Okay. Then 
third one is the intestinal cause so excessive intestinal absorption when will that happen Mm. Excessive are, supplementation of mm. calcium. So, is uh, some patients might be already diagnosed to have a vitamin D deficiency or hypocalcemia. They might be taking excessive calcium. calcium. That itself can cause hypercalcemia. Then, then is the milk alkali uh, syndrome, milk alkali uh, vitamin D intoxication, these things. So, these are the main three uh, broad classification of the causes of hypercalcemia. One can be excessive mo bone mobilization or excessive uh, reduced uh, excretion or, or it can be because of increased, increased absorption. absorption. Okay. So, how will you evaluate? So, initially we have to send for the parathyroid hormone levels. Mm. If the parathyroid hormone level is found to be <coughs> elevated, then you can go for the urinary 24 hour calcium levels. Mm. If the ca urinary calcium is also elevated, then we can diagnose it as primary hyperparathyroidism. Mm. If the urinary calcium is found to be low, then it can be diagnosed as familial hypocalcemic hypercalcemia. Then, uh, then we can go for if the parathyroid hormone is found to be so normal. So, urinary calcium 24 hour sending will be difficult from the ER. Mm -hmm. So, in the ER, what all are the feasible investigations which we will be able to do? Uh, parathyroid levels, levels we can, can send. Be. Then, calcitonin levels can be sent, vitamin D levels can be sent. Mm -hmm. The uh, vitamin D levels usually calcitonin level, vitamin D are very expensive tests. And mostly vitamin D, we are not expecting anyone to be in hypervitaminosis mm. because mostly 80% more of the Indians are vitamin D deficient. Now, other than until and unless they are coming with an intoxication, we are not expecting extra vitamin D of, for that patient. So, parathyroid is a feasible investigation. Then, then what is the other cause of hypercalcemia? Parathyroid related peptides can be sent. Oh, that is only when if there is a malignancy, malignancy we are suspecting like that that is also a uh, difficult investigation other causes easy investigation renal fa uh, renal function test functions. so we can know whether there is any renal Ren failure renal. or anything uh, it can be mostly uh, as we told see uh, renal failure itself will cause hypocalcemia only but we can see what is the renal functions. Mm -hmm. This hypercalcemia itself can cause stones that can cause obstructive uropathy and renal failure. So, renal function test. Then, anything in the liver function test? Albumin. Albumin levels, levels. and also alkaline phosphatase. So, what is the importance of alkaline phosphatase? In multiple myeloma, uh, ALP will both will be increased. Mm -mm. In malignancy, that is in, ah. in case of any metastasic disease. ALP will be increased because of the bone metastasis and all. ALP will increase. But in multiple myeloma, even though it is a bone related uh, cancer, ALP will be normal. Okay. So, uh, what are things we told? Uh, parathyroid levels, uh, renal function test and also uh, uh, alkaline phosphatase and albumin. Why albumin is important? Because 40% uh, of the calcium is bound to the albumin in the hmm. ECF. So, uh, usually albumin, significance of albumin will come only in hypocalcemia. Mm -hmm. If you are seeing a very low calcium mm -hmm. and we can check with the albumin and see for the corrected calcium. Whereas in hypercalcemia, the role of albumin will be coming only if we are suspecting in terms of a multiple myeloma. Mm -hmm. So, what is the classical feature of multiple myeloma? Mm -hmm. Uh, AG, AG reversal, reversal will be there. So, be AG, we are expecting an AG reversal because of excessive globulins uh, in multiple, multiple myeloma. So, that is why in uh, patients in, with multiple myeloma, there can be hypercalcemia and AG reversal. Uh, so, in that scenario, you can check albumin. Then what all things will be seen in multiple myeloma? Benson. What is CRAB? C4, C4 hypercalcemia. R4? Renal failure. Renal failure. Renal failure. Then A4? Mm -hmm. Anemia. Anemia. Hmm? B4? Bone, bone pains. Bone pains. So C is hypercalcemia. R is for renal, renal failure. failure. A is for anemia. anemia. And B is for bone, bone pain. pain. Sometimes we itself in our ER, we might get patients coming like that. And from ED itself, we have diagnosed. Uh, Multi, uh, different patients with we at, we uh, uh, diagnosed at hypercalcemia we managed we evaluated and we have found that ultimately the patient uh, had multiple myeloma 
So uh, in this patient, we will be getting classical AG reversal. Mm -hmm. Along with that, we will be seeing excessive globulin levels mm -hmm. will be seen and we will see a normal alkaline phosphatase yes. level. So it's if this is seen, we can evaluate based on the other investigation. What are the other investigation for multiple myeloma? X-rays can be taken. X-rays. X-rays of which are parts? Uh, mm. Skull bone to look for? Uh, punched, punched, punched out, out lytic lesions, lesions then then spine, spine, spine x-ray and the pelvis, pelvis x-ray to see for the lytic lesions then electrophoresis, ah, electrophoresis. electrophoresis. electrophoresis to see for the m band then then we can send the immunoglobulin levels light chain and heavy chain immunoglobulin levels okay based on that we can evaluate that also so these are the causes okay so uh, then we will discuss about the treatment so we have already discussed about the hydration fluids and also frucimide mm -hmm. okay so we will have to give at least uh, 6 to 10 liters of fluid along with that we will have to give frucimide to uh, remove that calcium from the body then what are the other treatment options then calcitonin can be given mm. calcitonin is given uh, four units international units per kg mm. uh, it can be given a uh, q6h or uh, q12h mm. according Root. to the uh, so it can be given subcutaneous or intramuscular mm. uh, then the next modalities we can give bisphos uh, bisphosphonates can be given normally mm. given a solindronic acid can be given mm. uh, one more thing i forgot to mention is that there can be excessive absorption of calcium in case of granulomatous disease what is a granulomatous disease sarcoidosis, sarcoidosis tuberculosis then histoplasmosis and all there can be excessive calcium absorption so, if we are suspecting in terms of sarcoidosis, how will you evaluate? We can go for the ACTH panel. Mm. Can be As um, ACE levels, levels will be elevated, okay. then you can see bilateral uh, lymph nodes. Lymph, uh, uh, lymph, lymph nodes, nodes can be, be seen. Okay. So, uh, that should be there. Okay. So, uh, uh, so calcitonin levels. Calcitonin we, we can give as a subcutaneous, subcutaneous or IM, IM injections for uh, international units per kg. kg. Okay. Then for this patient, 200 units was given as BD. Mm. Uh, so, what will calcitonin do? Calcitonin will uh, decrease the absorption uh, from the intestine and also uh, promotes the excretion through the urine. Okay. Okay. Um, then, uh, if the if the if all these treatments fail, then we and calcium is more than sixteen, we can go for dialysis of the patient. Mm. What are the other treatment modalities? So we have discussed about fluids, fluids, calcitonin, calcitonin bisphosphonates, uh, bisphosphonates. Uh, bisphosphonates. Bisphosphonates. When is when is it used? Uh, osteoporotic uh, if the patients are provided that bisphosphonates are contraindicated in lena renal failure mm -hmm. okay if it is uh, if uh, there is no renal failure we can give uh, bisphosphonate like solindronic acid. acid we can give 4 mg in 100, 100 ml NS over 15 to 20 minutes can be given uh, or any other uh, etidronic acid or Sorry. any other uh, bisphosphonates can be used uh, what is the role of bisphosphonate uh, it activates the uh, osteoclastic activity. Osteoclastic activity, activity means it is bone reabsorption. reabsorption. It will reduce, reduce the, osteoclastic the osteoclastic activity, activity. and it will also prevent the, uh, it will enhance the excretion, excretion also. Okay. Then what are the other agents? Okay. One more thing you can give before going into dialysis. Steroids can be steroids given. can be given. So what can be given? What steroids? Uh -huh. Uh, hydrocortisone can be given 200 to, 200 to 300 milligram hydrocortisone can be given uh, then be the prednisolone can be given uh, 1 to 2 milligram per kg can be given what will steroid do um, steroids are mainly given in case of uh, sarcoidosis and uh, tuberculosis uh, two advantages are there one is it will reduce the inflammation, inflammation because of that lesions and other thing is it will it can calcium be absorption decreases the calcium absorption okay okay then last resort is dialysis. dialysis if everything fails and still if the patient is having hypercalcemia then the last resort is dialysis, dialysis. okay and then what happened to this patient now what all things did we give this patient we gave fluids, give fluids classic, classic calcitonin. calcitonin injection was given mm. uh, within 72 hours the calcium got corrected in this patient and uh, the calcium level was 9.69 mm. on discharge 
okay so whenever you are monitoring the patient make sure that you are always having the cardiac monitor attached we need to look for arrhythmias also and in elderly individuals another thing is if you are giving large volumes of fluids they can go into flash pulmonary demand or especially if they are already having some renal failure also that also should be taken care of okay